Ask Reddit. What was the incident that made you cut somebody close out of your life? They started engaging in behavior around my kids which reminded me a little bit too strongly of the way I was treated by a child molester when I was little. And they tried to get my kids to ignore rules that I had set and replace them with their own rules. I had a roommate whose BF broke up with her. I went and picked up her stuff from his house and took her out to eat. On the way home she's going on about how he could walk out of the house and get hit by a bus and how heartbroken she would be. I pointed out there wasn't a bus stop next to his house trying to lighten up the mood. They only dated about 3 months or something. So she turns to me and says I hope your husband dies in Iraq. So you know my pain I told her that was going too far and she kept at it. I pointed out we had been together years not months and he was her friend too but she didn't care and never said sorry. She was drunk so I thought that was why she was being so mean. But the next day, when she was sober she stood by what she said. I kicked her out and never talked to her again. I used to go to the same pub every week on the regular with the same group of peeps, was an awesome time for a while. One of the girls got a new, slightly weird boyfriend, and kinda went downhill as a human. This culminated in one particular night, which would be our last time going as a result. On this night, she started being a huge bitch to the server, because the wings were taking too long. This is wing night. There are like 150 people here for cheap wings. And the server obviously has nothing to do with how long food takes to come out. So her and her boyfriend literally trash the table we were sitting at, spraying condiments all over, wetting napkins with sauce, and sticking them everywhere, and everybody else literally gets up, and moves or leaves. She was laughing like a psycho, her and her boyfriend were clearly getting off on one-upping each other's shittiness, and I decided I did not need that type of lunatic in my life. She said I was becoming arrogant. All my life I was a very submissive person, full of guilt for any perceived slight I might have made against someone, and generally apologetic for being the huge waste of space I thought I was. This girl I was friends with for 10 plus years tended to prey upon that. I was her walking dormant and would do anything she wanted. When I met my husband, he helped bring me out of that mentality, helped me become more assertive and to stop letting people walk all over me and take advantage of my submissive nature. This friend saw that and tried to stop it. She said I was changing, but not for the better. That I was becoming arrogant and selfish and a bad friend. At the time I was devastated, but my husband said, she can't control you anymore, and that scares her. He was right. Going 5 years, since I cut her, and some of our mutual friends, from my life, and I've never been in a better place mentally. I had a friend who kept insisting I had a mental illness, and wouldn't stop, even if I told her. She began telling my friends and even asking, if they thought the same thing. Because of this incident and her toxic personality I decided to tell her to fuck off which was definitely for the better. When my sister texted my mom with a message that read, You're a horseshit cunt of a mother. I can't wait until you die. It'll be the greatest day of my life. All because my mom wouldn't take $30,000 out of her retirement to bail out my sister's house that was to be foreclosed on because she's a lazy fuck who didn't want to work. The sad thing is that my mom was going to do it too. My dad and I convinced her that she's going to piss away the $30,000 to save the house and then in a few more months, right back in the same situation. It was a lost cause. My uncle basically forced my grandma to adopt a cat they found. He say he would pay for all the cat's expenses, vet, food, litter, etc. Since my grandma does not work and can't really afford the expenses of owning a pet. After 2 or 3 years of my grandma living with the cat, he got a bladder infection and had to be rushed to the vet. Since he had not peed in a couple of days, grandma did not notice this. My mom had to drive them, cause my grandma is not a confident driver and neither of them speaks English very well. Because of this my uncle was the one who was talking with the vet over the cat's treatments, and it boiled down to either putting the cat down, or do an expensive medical procedure. My uncle instead of telling my grandma what the situation was, and that the cat needed surgery, he simply told her that they needed to put the cat down, and to let me know, so I could go say goodbye to him. 
Once I arrive to the vet and see my mom and grandma crying cause they are saying their last goodbyes, I talk to the nurse wondering if there is anything we can do whatsoever to save his life. She looks at me confused and tells me that we could do an operation on him that had good chances of being successful. I tell my mom and grandma this and they are confused because my uncle told them the cat could not be saved. I ended up paying for the surgery and Valentino, cat's name, is still wagging his tail to this day. That was the day I stopped talking to my uncle. He has a very well paying job, no kids nor family, money is not an issue to him, yet he still decided to just put him down regardless of all the pain my grandma was going to feel. Best friend of 12 years, from young kids all the way up to 18 years old. He had a rough home life and the day he turned 18 his parents kicked him out, so we let him move in with us. This didn't really work out. He proved to be a terrible roommate and spent the next several months being a major pain in the ass. I won't go into major details beyond the breaking point. At the end of it, he was browsing my space on my computer when he found out through it that his girlfriend at the time was cheating on him. His response to this was to completely destroy my computer in a fit of rage, then demand I drive him down the hour long trip to the college she was attending the next state over. I decided to do so. When I dropped him off at her dorm, I made it clear in no uncertain terms that if he ever wanted to be back in my life he wouldn't come back until he showed up with enough money to buy me a replacement computer. He never did and I haven't spoken to him in over a decade as a result. If this counts cool, but once when I was little a former friend stole one of my B-blades. Yep. That's it. My older brother and his wife hash for turning my parents home into a crack house while mom and dad still there. Haven't seen or spoken to him in over 10 years. For me it wasn't a single incident, but the fact that she was always incredibly negative and refused to get counseling for the issues that she was going through. Every single time we hung out she would spend 2 hours complaining about the same 4 things over and over. One of them being that people never stuck around in her life at first I felt sympathy for her, then tried to suggest counseling to help talk through her issues, then I got frustrated and eventually I slowly let the relationship die out. I don't want that kind of toxicity in my life. The second time I've heard that he was flirting with my girlfriend, a different girl than the first time. A friend doesn't do that, so he was demoted quite instantly. I was scrawny growing up, like I was the lanky scrawny kid in every movie. I was tall among my classmates in middle school, but quickly got outpaced. I had friends that called me an anorexic because I was so scrawny. Even my neighbor who was a know-it-all teacher in a different school district said something like metabolism has no bearing on your weight. You're malnourished which I didn't believe for one second. I know it doesn't play as big of a role as people think, but it was genetic with me. My mother had been just as scrawny her entire life until she had to start taking medicine for an unrelated issue. Weight gain was a side effect. I digress. My friends called me anorexic for so long that I hated the way I looked. I eventually stopped talking to them. But it left me with a lot of issues about my appearance and weight for a very long time. Even now, I have this fear that I'm too skinny, but I'm afraid I'm going to get fat too when I'm older and my metabolism slows down. The thing is, I know and have known what anorexia is for years. Because I started to read up on it, and I had none of those symptoms. I mean, you aren't supposed to self-diagnose anyway, but still. I'm about to graduate with my bae in psychology. Like it affected me so bad, that at a summer program, we had a nutrition class. We got to eating disorders near the end, and when they started talking about anorexia, I actually fucking started crying. I was more embarrassed than anything. The program director talked to me, and I told her why it upset me, the reasons above. She asked me if it had anything to do with how it was presented, and I said no, because it wasn't. There wasn't anything that the people presenting said wrong. It was me. I asked her to tell them, and the rest of the people in the class, why I made a fool of myself, so they wouldn't think there was something seriously wrong. Because I didn't want them to worry about me, and start asking me if I was anorexic. Because the topic made me cry. Anyway, moral of the story is, don't make fun of people for their weight. Big or small. Being made fun of for being scrawny hurts like a bitch too. I put up with it for years. 
to make it worse I guess. I'm a guy. 21 meters now. But that doesn't mean it hurt any less. Had a cousin I loved like a brother. Me and him would always hang out. One day he introduces me to his new GF. I fell in love with her at first sight. Her and I were compatible in every way, shape, and form. Even her parents were everything I ever wanted, and we got along insanely well. Her dad would actually come home late from work and wake me up, so we could play video game and talk. My cousin would then proceed to tell me all the times he cheated on her, show me photos of the girls, and tell me the stories. When he wasn't telling me about how he cheated on her, he was complaining about her and the relationship. She found out twice he cheated, and twice she forgave him. We used to talk a lot, she knew I had problems with depression and anger. She asked how, do I pretend to be happy around people? And it broke my heart. I never felt so much pain, to see someone I fell, in love with experience so much sadness. I cut all ties with my cousin and her. Found out from my mother they got engaged last October. People say life is fair and karma happens, but I've seen proof, that it's all bullshit. People can be trash all their lived, and still reap the benefits. My mother knows I'll never go near him, or his family again. I have a second channel called Many HD where I upload even more Ask Reddit videos. Check it out, link is in the description.